Hi, everyone. Just before we get going, I want to remind you that everything we talk about and discuss should not be considered as investment advice. The purpose of what we talk about on Catherine Murray in Media and Markets on YouTube, as well as Catherine Murray in Conversation With on my podcast, should be viewed as informational and entertainment purposes only. Please definitely do your own research, your own homework, and definitely consult an investment professional before making any investment decisions. And also to note, some of us might hold positions in some of the stocks uh, that we discuss. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Top 5 at 5. Um, so glad to bring you once again, Joe Rabel, for a technical perspective on the markets because there's been just so much going on, whether it's the past week, three weeks, let alone since the beginning of the year. So, Joe, welcome. Um, I think everybody knows you're, I think, I think like the best on Wall Street. So thanks for being here. Uh-huh. Thanks for having me, Catherine. Enjoy it. Okay. Thank you. Well, there's a lot to go through. And as everybody knows, we're going to give the top five, your top five best technical ideas um, in 20 minutes. But I do want to start out with what we're seeing in the broader markets right now. So let's take a look at the S&P 500, um, just so people kind of get a sense as to what's happening here and what's going on. So I think uh, we should go back to the last time I was on the show. And um, if we looked at the monthly chart, we were up in here and I was basically saying that I thought there was a very high probability that we we're going to work our way back towards this 18 month line because we had gotten so stretched away and it'd been almost two years since we had touched mm-hmm. that line. Normally, when you get away for a couple of years, you have to come back to the line. Now, what I think is interesting is that why in the process of coming back to that line, people got very bearish. So. Mm-hmm. It was, um, I keep track of the investors intelligence sentiment numbers and the bull bear spread. And uh, during the summertime last year, it was up in the, there was like 45% more bulls than bears. At this low, and during the course of this bottoming process, we got down to negative 6%, meaning they've more bears than bulls. It just doesn't happen all that often. We get that in these big declines, like in the 2020 decline in 2018, but not. it's pretty rare to see that happen when we're above a rising 18 month line. So I really felt like based on the ADX pattern and the fact that it had come such from such a far distance and the fact that uh, uh, people got so bearish that this was gonna be a pretty good support. Um, now we've gotten a pretty good bounce Now, the problem is, is that the decline had a lot of selling pressure on it. So I think we're going to end up forming our trading range here. That's that's I think that's the highest probability. I don't think I don't think we're going to break out, although if I'm going to be surprised, it would probably be a breakout to the upside. Um, And I think people got too bearish to expect another big drop right now. So my, I think the highest probability, if we look at a weekly chart, is that, you know, this spends time trading, you know, maybe it gets up to 40. I think 4,600 was kind of like my target for this upside. It might get to 47 and then maybe just channel between this low and this high for now and just kind of consolidate. So, uh, Got it. Um, yeah, so we're at 46 right now. What, what's the um, what's the low? My eyes are bad. 4,200-ish. It was a little oh. under 4,200. Okay. Um, but support's probably closer to 4,400, 43, 44, something like that. Okay. So from for the time being, um, you know, it, it sounds like we're going to be range bound on the S&P 500, not to bring in fundamental analysis be- to the picture, because that's not what you do at all. Um, you don't care about it, um, which is great, because that means you're a pure technician. Um, but it, but it, quite frankly, that range bound, I think, kind of dovetails with what you're seeing in the market from a strategy and economic perspective, because we just, there are just so many unknowns and uncertainties. So it kind of makes sense, actually. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I don't think, uh, you know, I think if they were going to break it down, they would have already done that. Um, And uh, again, I, you know, I I don't, the the sentiment number is a backup uh, indicator for me, but when it comes in a specific time, it becomes pretty important. Okay. Let's Uh, take, the next, um, do we want to take a look at the NASDAQ? I think the NASDAQ is worth talking about just because it was a more violent decline. And the one thing I want to point out that didn't happen in the uh, S&P is this overrun of the MACD line. So, you know, we get this move where we get really, ex- so here's the zero line down here. Mm-hmm. We get extended away from it, from the upside, showing we had a really nice trend. 
But in the process of pulling back, this actually rolled through the signal line, which is like the moving average of the MACD. And when that happens, that just tells me that this has lost momentum and it increases the likelihood that the overall market is going to form some kind of a range as opposed to just break out right away. So that's kind of where I'm leaning just based on this. Um, we've had a really good rally, which I think, again, stabilizes things. But thinking that it's just going to blow through 16,000 right now, I just think is a low probability. I'd, I'd lean more towards maybe getting up towards 15,000 and then forming, again, forming some kind of a trading range. Okay. Um, do we want to take a look at, I see you have the TSX up there. I don't know if you want to look at that. Uh, sure. I mean, I think it's it's interesting. It it hasn't gone through any real um, violent selling at all. It's been more of a sideways pattern, and now it's trying to lift off that. What I'm keying on right now, in the weekly chart, we just broke out. Mm -hmm. um, what what I like is the volume. And it's good volume action, but I don't necessarily like what I'm seeing in the ADX right now. This green DI. Um, is showing the strength of the buyers and it's just not kicking in. And I think if this is going to be a real move, like and have any real length to it, we're going to need to see this green DI line moving higher. So that's kind of what I'm watching right now. But I would say the bias is to the upside here. Hmm. Okay. Um, let's uh, take a quick look at oil and then we'll get into this, some of the top stock ideas. Yeah. So um, we made a pretty big spike move. Um, so this chart probably explains everything. So we got this nice breakout and then we got this extended move in one bar and then had follow through the following week huh. after a pretty big run. I mean, that shows sort of climatic activity here. Huh. And um, so I'm leaning towards these stocks going through a consolidation phase. Now, if you look at oil, oil has been going through a consolidation, but a lot of the stocks keep moving higher. And I think the reason is, as long as oil can stay above, you know, a specific level, like something like mid 80s, 80, something like that, then those stock, all these stocks are profitable, especially like the drillers and all that stuff. So I think, mm -hmm. and not to get into any fundamental analysis or anything, I, I don't want to get into that. <laughs> no, don't do that. The reality is, is that north of 80, those stocks could continue to have upward pressure, especially like some of these stocks that have been really out of favor for years. So, um, I think as long as this is stable, and it looks to me like it is going to be based on the ADX pattern, then I, I mean, I would consider it to be a, a pretty pretty good environment for energy. I just don't like the timing of them right now. I want to go through a pullback or consolidation in some of these stocks um, mm -hmm. because they've gotten a little extended in the short term. Okay. But it sounds as though when we think about oil right now, say, you know, there's been such a run up and I think people start to get concerned or maybe even sell some of their positions when you see WTI pull back. But at the end of the day, what you're saying is from a technical perspective, you know, 80 is kind of the, the, the mark in terms of where these stocks can still work. $80, $80 WTI. Is that right? I think so. I mean, again, I'm not a fundamentalist. I don't know what that level actually is, but I, I, here's, what, here's what I'll say. Based on what I've seen in the momentum, I don't think it's very likely that this is just going to fall apart. And I'm not talking about just oil. I'm talking about the individual stocks and the way that they ran up in the energy area. They don't look like the end of a move. They look like they need to pause and pull back and consolidate, mm -hmm. but they don't look like uh, trend ending material based on how strong the momentum characteristics is, especially on the weekly chart. Okay. Sounds great. Um, let's take a look at some of the stocks. What's the top one? Juniper uh, on the tech side. I haven't heard heard or looked at Juniper in a long time. Juniper I know, I don't think anyone has. And huh. I, I think, I, I love this when I bring this up to my institutional clients and they're yawning or they're like, you know, this is just a nothing burger or whatever, you know, like, <laughs> because this stock oh my is gosh. breaking <laughs> out. You know, I mean, this is, uh, we're talking about a tech stock. I mean, yeah. tech's been crushed. Now, a lot of those stocks are finding support and trying to turn up, but this is, this is pretty amazing what this is doing, breaking out of a four, five, six year base um, mm -hmm. in the midst of, uh, uh, you know, what what happened to tech over the last few months. So I've been watching this for a while. I don't think it's too late, although I would. I'm glad to see it actually pulling back. I would love to see it pull back a little bit more, uh, a little bit closer to the breakout area in the low 30s. I would take advantage of that because I think based, again, on the momentum characteristics and the fact that so I'm zeroing in on this. The relative strength, you see, this is the relative strength versus the S&P. 
the, the, so it's essentially a relative uh, performance line. So, and when this is rising, it's outperforming the market and it's mm -hmm. doing the same thing to the sector. And so mm -hmm. it's very intriguing from that standpoint. After a big drop in the market or an index or a, you know, a, a individual uh, industry group or sector, I like to go looking for the relative strength stocks. And this is definitely one of them. Interesting. Okay. Um, let's take a look at the next one. REGN. Is that, yeah. which, which company is that? Just so I've got Regeneron? Regeneron. Pharmaceuticals. Okay. Yeah. And so kind of the same concept, but, um, you know, we can look at this and just see the pattern. It, it, it went through this long decline and then rallied up back to this prior high, but now you've gone through a really tighter consolidation pattern and it's moving up. <laughs> I mm -hmm. like the MACD pattern. I like the fact that the ADX is kicking in. But again, you know, I'm I'm sort of zeroed in on this relative performance and the fact that it's improving. And, and after a market drops, I'm going to look for relative strength. Okay, because you want you want to see the stocks that are outperforming relative to the broader market. The, the markets, the, the stocks that don't go down when a market goes down, they're sort of telling you something. It, it's uh, they're, they're, when they're resilient like that. Um, it, it, they tend to be some of the better performers, maybe not right out of the gates. I mean, right now we're getting stocks like Facebook and PayPal and Square that got murdered having the biggest moves, but I don't know how long that's going to last. Um, huh. I think those are more like trading moves. And then I think the stocks like this start to kick in and uh, I think they could, they could play really well. Um, so I'm focused in on stocks with good relative performance, but all overall characteristics too. Hmm. Okay. And with Regeneron, um, what kind of uh, upside are you looking at from these levels? Um, you know, when a stock is breaking out of a big base like this, so this mm -hmm. is kind of like a base on a base, if you think about it. So this is one base, big base yeah. here, and then it formed another little base here and it's really just getting going. Um, mm -hmm. I don't really even like to put targets on it. I mean, I can give you kind of a ballpark of you know, from this breakout point, you could almost assume it should work up towards 800, maybe above 800. But again, I mean, I'm looking at it from a standpoint of saying this has all the characteristics for like the next three, six months, maybe even longer than that. Okay. But um, something and, that I'd want to own. Okay. Interesting. And I think it's important as well, you know, to, to look at the technicals and, and to point out what you're doing in terms of the basing and the time it took, because you know, if people do want to participate in the market right now, the last thing you want to do is buy a stock that, you know, is at, you know, at a high, but doesn't have the technicals to support. In other words, it's more likely to go down than up. So that's, you know, really valuable to be able to look at this in that way. Yeah. Yeah. And if we go to the next stock, I yeah. think this is the same concept because um, here we have, and I told you, the, the next one is AEP. It's, AEP, American it's a utility power. stock. And you know, most people don't, you know, first of all, they don't think much of utilities, generally speaking. Um, but when you look at the overall patterns out there, at least when I do, and I'm going through thousands of charts each week, the ones as a group, as an industry, or as, you know, that, that kind of jump off the screen to me with nice basing patterns, improving momentum, good overall characteristics are in the utilities. And and these are not trades. I mean, it's really important to recognize. I'm going to bring up a stock in a minute that I would consider a little bit more of a trading play, but mm -hmm. this is something that's breaking out of a big base, uh, you know, paying the dividend, I think has yeah. the potential to work its way higher over the course of the next six to 12 months or longer, um, just based on what it's doing. So we can look at, there's several utilities, but I thought this was a, just a good representation of them. So, Joe, let me ask you this, though, um, with utilities, and, and you're saying that you're noticing this pattern with a lot of utilities, um, it's interesting and curious to me because, and maybe we need to take a look at the, um, uh, I don't know, the U.S. 10-year yield, or probably the 30-year yield is what, what might be more indicative of what's going on in utilities. In other words, the bond market is, I think, saying that we might have inflation now, maybe there's some stagflation, but ultimately there's either slower growth um, and the interest rates aren't going to move that much. Am I right? You know, uh, I don't know that that's what this is. I really okay. don't know that that's what this is. Huh. I think this has more, this ha might have more to do with the fact that yes, currently the market is in rally mode, but 
Is that setting up for something more important, uh, some type of a more important correction phase that's or some type of a topping phase? Or is it really I'm, the start yeah. of a whole new leg to the upside? And if it isn't, then utilities are going to be one of the best places to be. Right. Like there's obviously somebody taking a bet that, you know, rates, nor because normally, right, like rates, if rates are rising, the dividend paying stocks might not move as much. But people are obviously still looking for income and think that this is a place that, that we can get it from versus moving into the fixed income market. Either that or or they're hiding because they're Fair. worried about the market. Fair point. It, it could be a yes. defensive play. <laughs> I don't right. know. The fact no, is, right. I, right. I, I will know six months down the road why. We'll get the reasons why. But that's why yeah. I like I, I try and stay a pure tech technical analyst. I I care about yeah. the news only in the way that it affects the stock price. And so yeah. the news is important. But how a stock reacts to the news is a lot more important to me. Right. No, you're right. I mean, if you're a big money manager and you're concerned and you got to stay invested, you're, you probably are buying some utilities right now. I would think. I would okay. think. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. We won't know yet. Yeah. But the, the patterns are good. Off. That's the good news yeah. here is you can buy okay. so I try and th I, I laugh because sometimes I tell people I like to be the Warren Buffett of technical analysis where he's just buying an individual company. He's not focused on anything else. I'm looking for something that meets all of my criteria. If it mm -hmm. meets my criteria, then I have to accept that and say, okay, I, I got to look at this really hard and say, no matter how I, what I believe, I have yeah. to accept that the, the, what's going on here is pretty important. Okay. Um, when you look at it, before we move on to the next two, um, is there any time frame like the the Regeneron you thought could work for a number of months? Is this this is longer? This is longer. Okay. This is a bigger base. This is a tighter pattern. And um, okay. you know, one thing that I'll just point out really quickly is that the entire 2021 was contained inside of 2020. So it's an inside, last year was an inside year and we're breaking out the high of an inside year. So I know a lot of people probably look at inside days and inside weeks, but I actually look at all the stocks that are inside years every, every at the, and it's one of the things I send to my subscribers is, you know, mm -hmm. what are the stocks that are inside years that if they break out to the upside, it would be pretty important. And a lot of utilities fe fell into that category this year uh, at the end of 2021. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at the next one. BOX is the ticker. Yeah. So going back to the relative strength, this is hitting new highs relative to the market. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we're talking about, I believe these guys are like cloud guys or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, hitting a new high. I mean, you, you got, again, you got to look at its peers and look at how badly they got beaten up and this stock didn't budge. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested in something like that. Now, it's a nice base and all that. This is the one point that I would make about this. Um, I trust this about as far as I can spit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm buying a breakout pattern. If it fails to any you know, real degree, I wouldn't want to be there anymore. As long as it stays okay. above, essentially stays above 27. Yeah, I'm okay with this. If, if the group rolls down and this has a violent, come, some kind of a break of 27, I'd be like, okay, I'm taking a small loss, a couple dollars, and I'll, I'll move on. If it holds there, we could be seeing the start of a whole nother leg. And I think this is a great way to think about breakouts. If you think about them this way, um, you, can, you can put yourself in a position to make really good money, um, but you, know, you, you don't have to take all the risk. Okay. So, yeah. So, and that's an important point too, that I think you, you know, um, you know, try to teach people as well as for something like this, if it, if it breaks that $27 level, you want to get out, just cut your loss. Yeah. I mean, in this instance, based on who it is, what it's, who it's, you know, because of the group it's associated with and the sector and everything, I'm probably not giving it as a, a long and a, a longer leash. Now, AEP, you know, if that fiddles back into the breakout area, it's not going to bother me as much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's take a look at the next one. WPM is the ticker. And yeah, for, I had to do you it. Know, these, all, these are all U.S. stocks. Make sure you're getting the right yeah. ticker on yeah. the uh, U.S. exchanges. These are U.S. stocks. I just had to do this. Uh, Mind you, a wheat and precious metals. Okay. It's a, it's a gold. Um, I just love this bigger picture pattern. And... Um, 
there's just a couple of things going on. It tried to move higher, but the 18 month was still declining. So I think it's going to take, you know, I think it's in the process of working itself out, but the ADX is telling me there's more upside coming. The group action has improved dramatically. Um, hmm. We've gotten some pretty good strength uh, recently and look at the volume action in this. And I think this plays as a part of the big, you know, uh, inflationary type movement in stocks, which I don't think is over. It might be, they're pulling back hard a little bit over the last couple of days, because I guess they think uh, Russia, Ukraine, whatever, I, I don't know. But mm -hmm. it, to me, this is part of something much bigger. And I don't see that ending yet. I think there's more, and this is a big base with big mm -hmm. volume showing up now. This is the best volume it's had in two years, two, three years. Interesting. Um, so I wanted to go back because we've got oh, only about a minute left. But um, with with Juniper, because it was you know a stock that you know I don't think many tech PMs really have looked at for years, and that's indicative in the chart. What's the volume like? I'm just wondering how many people are actually kind of starting to take a look at this. Yeah, I mean, look at the so look at this move. You see these green bars showing up? Yeah. So the bottom of the chart is the volume. Yeah, and we can just, so oh, nice. you start looking at this. This is the moving average of the volume. So you can see the green bar is starting to take over. It just looks to me, especially recently, all the, all the abnormal volume bars are buying bars. Oh, interesting. So this is all taking place. I think most importantly, a stock with powerful momentum, but where it's taking place in a group and sector that really... You know, I mean, we could look at Cisco. Cisco took a much bigger dive and just dropped down. It's not as strong, anywhere near as strong. It's a direct competitor. But just looking at it in terms of, you know, information technology services, this is very impressive what it's doing. Hmm. Okay. All right, Joe, we're going to leave it there. That is awesome. Oh, wait, but I want to say before we go, um, you know, for everybody to understand, Joe and I met because of my previous life um, as an institutional salesperson at, at Deutsche Bank and Goldman and all that. And I would take Joe to see huge institutional clients who love using you and working with you to make sure that they weren't hitting a technical road bump, you know, before they bought or sold after they'd done their fundamental analysis. And, and that's still what you do. But Joe, tell, tell everybody what you also do for retail and individual investors. Yeah, about a year or two ago, I started, uh, I provide a subscription model now. It's $100 a month, but I do still have the special uh, uh, pricing for if you use the coupon code Catherine, mm -hmm. uh, you can get the first two months for $50. Uh, and, you know, you can give it a try. But, you know, it's, I send out about two to three reports each week. Um, I do a private video for that group as well. Um, just giving insights into what I'm seeing, what stocks look the most attractive about, you know, look at the market, the sectors and all that. So that's kind of the goal with that. Okay. Yeah, like you provide ideas for people and an overview of what's going on in the market. And for institutional clients, in case there's people who, you know, might want that, um, you review their portfolios. Right, right. Yeah, I do. Um, uh, and in fact, I've sort of changed the way I do that as well. I have a lower pricing model for guys that just want to stay in contact and email me if they have a question on a stock or give me a quick call. We do, you know, maybe tw once or twice a month, we do a quick, uh, you know, 15, 20 minute call and stay on top of all the stocks that are important. So um, it's been a, it's been pretty good. I think people have really liked it uh, as opposed to I have guys that are like 24 five guys where they can call me anytime, any day, and we go through everything all the time, regular basis. So th th this is a little bit different, but I, I've found guys really gotten a lot out of it. They really enjoy it. Nice. Okay. Joe, we'll leave it there. Great to have you on. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks for having me, Catherine. Enjoyed it. Thanks.